Okay, tonight's adventure in trying to mill aluminum. I got some new bits and I have some old bits and I don't know how any of them work with aluminum. Let's start with this. Look at that. That is my first, uh, my first mill and drill. Uh, again, darn you, John from NYCNC, you were doing a thing where you showed using a mill and drill and I thought, hey, you know, I've never really done that. And, so yeah, so a and joke. Get to figure out how that works tonight. I'm not sure exactly how I'm going to test this. The other stuff I have an idea. All right, this is my go-to cutter. It's a, uh, a single flute Osrod, Oslod, whatever their name is. I'm a horrible for pronunciation. Osrod. Uh, it's a 65 triple zero. This is the quarter inch, I think the part number is like 65027. It'll, I'll put a link in the description. Um, this is my go-to for everything. Uh, I have been doing Excel spreadsheet math. I have decided that I'm going to use chip load as gospel, and I'm going to build all my feeds and speeds off of optimal chip load. Bottom of the range optimal chip load, but chip load is what I'm focusing on. So I've got quarter inch, 65 triple zero, uh, I've got this little guy, it's an eighth inch, is eighth inch, same thing, single flute, these are all single flute, spiral, upcut, um, those, so that's that, they're all also carbide, 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 and for my project, for the whole reason I'm doing all this, this is a little sixteenth inch, again carbide, single flute, same triple zero, According to their to their uh, chip load on aluminum, just for reference, this is supposed to have a uh, two thousandth chip load minimum, two to four thousandth chip load. That's at one d one diameter of cut. They say uh, that uh, uh, two diameter is uh, fifty percent of that, and three diameter would be which three diameter would be like three sixteenths of a cut. It'd be really deep. Um, would be uh, fifty percent of that. So. Right, so it'd be one thousandth would be the minimum if I actually did a three sixteenths inch cut. This guy's also the same uh, two thousandths minimum, and the aluminum is, or the 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 quarter inch <clears throat> is supposed to be um, a chip load of three to six. So the the smaller ones are two to four, the big ones three to six. I'm going to be doing everything at two. I have <clears throat> this piece of aluminum is what I'm going to be testing on. I'm going to brace it down and I'm going to do the zigzag test again, shamelessly stolen from watching um, John at NYCNC. And I'm just going to go back and forth and I'm going to play with stuff around, around that chip load and <clears throat> hopefully not break a bit. If I break the bit, then hey, what not? Last thing I'm going to be about, these are the world's cheapest end mills they're high speed they're high speed steel um that's a half inch it's a half inch three eighths five sixteenths um actually don't look horrible for i think the whole set was like twenty dollars but i mean it's high speed steel so they're gonna dull real fast this is mostly again I, i've never really done aluminum and I had not found Lakeshore uh, Carbide yet. <clears throat> Lakeshore Carbide's bits are really, really reasonably priced. I'm used to spending $40 on, on this guy. And breaking him at $40 is very frustrating. So I bought something cheap, so when I break it, it's cheap. Um, <clears throat> for the purposes of my project, I don't know if I'm gonna use these other than surfacing. I wanna use this half inch to surface the aluminum. Um, the aluminum, so, you know. That's a nice surfacing, right? Um, but I don't know if I'm going to use these other than that. And we'll see. We'll see what happens. <clears throat> the the drill and mill, I'm going to use this for chaffering all my aluminum because there's going to be lots of sharp edges on my design. And so, all right, I could, I could set that up as a chaffer. I specifically got this bit. It is, what is the angle? I got a 90 degree angle on it. So nice 90 degree angle for, for, for that. Um, all right, so I got to do some stuff on, in Excel. I'm going to set up my test scenarios, write them all out so I know what the heck I'm doing. And then next thing you're going to see is see me out on, on the mill, well, on the router, and we're going to see what happens. And hopefully I don't break the bits.
And if I do break some bits, it will be hilarious. Hilarious. I totally forgot. Check these out. I'm not going to use them on this project, so I'm probably not even going to try to test them. This is a 16th inch end mill. Kind of, kind of like the other 16th oh, inch. Little itty bitty 16th inch end mill. It's, um, it's got a half inch cut depth, which is a lot for 16th inch end mill. Most of them only have have a quarter, which, so, so why would I have this? I think, I think it's for when I'm doing any carving and I really have to get down inside something. So we'll see. Not going to use this tonight. Not going to mess with this tonight, but I just thought it was cool. So I was going to show it anyways. All right, so safety third, however, safety third, right? Um, did actually do what we want. Now we're going to try zero. I had to tweak it a couple of times. You're not going to see those. It took me like four tries to get the G-code right. But G-code's right. Um, now we're going to try it to be zero. So we're going to try to cut it. Just a little bit. Of it. That was an amazing failure. Nothing broke, but a failure. And I recorded it. And you'll get to see it. Or you already saw it. Time to figure out how to hold it down better. Since clamping doesn't work, we're going to try double sticky tape. Um, we're learning. We don't have good hold downs. i got to figure this out before I do the big aluminum anyways. So, little focus. You see that? You see that welding that's happening? That is classic conventional milling. Um, which go onto YouTube and watch a video on the difference between conventional and why that happens. It's actually very interesting and maybe I'll cover it, but other people have done way better at it. However, that's what I'm talking about. Okay, I have a beautifully set up rig. I need to add it. I'm gonna grab another camera because I want to show the finish. I need a conventional milling, which um, kind of looks uh, so. I'm gonna uh, reverse my G-code. This is such a learning opportunity. You guys learn so much. I learn so much. Everybody's learning so much. Um, I'm gonna reverse the G-code so I'm climbing just because it'll make a pretty finish. And really, most of the time, we wanna do climb anyways. So, let's open up a camera and that. Yes. I may just like hold the camera and show the. Yeah. All right. <laughs> This squared off. Actually, really super happy with that finish. That is not. That is not too shabby. It's. It's no like shining light of perfect, but I mean, come on, this is a router, not a mill. Um, I tried to go faster, but I started when I when I went faster. Uh, RPMs. Um, I see the chips being left behind. I don't know if that means they're not evacuating properly and maybe with proper speed and stuff that wouldn't be an issue. But those are pretty respectable chips. I, I don't know what kind of chip I'm supposed to get, but it's not dust. It is an actual chip. It is actually curled chips. So I think, you know, really I was just trying to see can I use this for, you know, at all. And I think 5020 is good. I think I can work with that. So now let's try some other bits. All right, time for the real test. We're either gonna break a bit or it's gonna be brilliant. We're gonna do a 33% engagement on a 0.25 bit. We're gonna go a full 0.25 deep, which some people say is a no-no. We're gonna give it a shot. Um, this is a really long bit, which is a little frustrating. Now that I learned more, I think I will never buy a bit this long again unless I really have to. Um, so yeah, so 0.25 depth of cut, 0 0.075, we're gonna go 33 inches per minute. 5,000 RPM. May God have mercy on my soul. We 
are finding the fatal flaw of using a router and why I'm making the big thingamabobber. I just don't, can't hold the work down. The tape it ripped out, so trying lots more clamps, still tape, tape and more clamps. Now I'm going to do a smaller pass, so let's see what happens. <laughs> So I just wanted to show what that quarter end mill result that this is the end mill that seems to be just kicking butt. Um, it's a uh, four flute, high speed steel. Uh, no, you're not supposed to use four flute and high speed steel is kind of, nobody uses that anymore, everybody uses carbide, but I'm pretty impressed by it. And it was like a whole kit of them was like $13. So I expect them not to last long, but you know, it's good, good learning material. But look at that. Okay, it did that whole cut. You can see, yeah, you can see that engagement did that last pass. Just super pretty, much much prettier than than what the other that the single flute was doing. So, uh, yeah, I mean, there's a little bit of waviness there, and I probably can tune it, but that is just, I'm happy. I'm happy. I feel like I can actually cut aluminum now. So, awesome. All right. So, we learned a whole lot. First. <laughs> I have to say that the single flute bits were useless. They did not like aluminum. Even though I was doing chip loads and settings that they say were good, they were horrible on aluminum. The chips were beautiful, big, big chips, actually shockingly big chips, especially. Um, however, the results were horrible. Um, so no, don't use single flutes, which means I've got to go buy some three flute 16th inch bits like Pronto because I need 16th inch bits and I have no other than the single flute bits. Um, two, those high speed steel bits were amazing. The half inch bit did a beautiful job. Once I had everything fixtured down properly, the half inch bit did a beautiful job surfacing the side. Um, 5,000 RPM, I think I was taking five, five thou at a time, it was beautiful. Um, the, 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 the just on a, a Lark, we tested the quarter inch, um, the quarter inch, uh, um, high speed steel bit and uh, it just 10,000 RPMs 20 inches a minute probably could have gone faster on the inches per minute uh, but it, it beautiful beautiful result just can't complain um, and it was it was the before we we got the the we could get that single flute to work at 10,000 RPM um, doing a, a, a depth of a, of a 32nd of an inch and uh, engagement of a 32nd of an inch, a very, very small. Um, we kind of went woohoo, we're happy when we got that high carbon speed steel one to do an engagement of uh, a 16th of an inch and cutting of uh, what was it, maybe three thirty seconds or a little more than that. So we kind of got back to our target, which was 30% ish of the, of the, so anyways, yeah, uh, huge. Huge difference, a shockingly huge difference. Um, that floor flute, also um, to stub your end mill, that was a big difference, uh, and I'm sure there's a huge difference just being a stub your end mill and having the four flutes uh, means it could cut more chips, which in aluminum is technically bad, but here it seemed to do a beautiful thing. So, so yeah, the results are not what I expected at all, but that's kind of what this channel's for: um, me learning and you watching and laughing at home. So. Uh, we, nobody lost an eye, so that's promising. Um, all right, thanks, and uh, yeah, subscribe wherever the button is. I don't know where it is, but <laughs> somewhere. Hit it. Thanks. <laughs>